Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about making a mat with a slit scan technique that we can use for displacement. We're going to be making something like this. And this one in particular will already be made for you because you can grab it as a project file on our website. The link's in the description. So what drives this is our source comp. And you can see in here I have two different types of JS placement. I have classic and velvet. The velvet just sits in the background to cover up any gaps. And on top of that, we have a JS classic layer. And since these are like 8K textures, we can move them around a lot. So on position, I have a wiggle expression and it's just wiggle 24 comma 2000. So this will move every frame since we're at 24 frames per second up to 2000 pixels. So if we scrub through that, you can see just all over the place. So the first mat I built with that was a static mat. It has some settings and a controller and all. You can see it's frame offset. We have it set to one. Number of slices or number of slice slices 200 right now you can make this like 10 if you want you can make it a bunch more but the higher this number is the longer it takes to do it so if you set this much higher than 200 it's going to get really slow however the good news is that since we're using this as a static mat you only really need to calculate one frame it's probably also a good idea to just save out the mat as a png all right so in my source layer i have a couple of expressions I hit ee it open those up and i'm going to open up expressionist so we can see it a little bit better Move this over here all right, click on time remap. All right, so we're setting F equal to our frame offset controller from our null. And I have all of these source layers parented to the controller. When I build these, I just have the one source layer. And then when I'm finished with the expression, I duplicate it like 11 billion times. So this next line takes our index that we have on this layer. And then we're going to subtract this.parent.index. I do this so that we can put things on top of this if we want to, and it won't affect anything below it because it's basically just the offset from this layer to the controller. Then we're gonna multiply that times F, which is our frame offset, times this comp dot frame duration. Because the time parameter and the time remap thing is in seconds. So if we used one here, it would actually be 24 and what we'd really need is 1 24th. Basically in this case, this comp dot frame duration is 1 24th. So when we multiply it by F, we get 1 24th. For the first layer, 2 24ths for the second layer and so on. Think of it like we're taking the index and we're multiplying that by the frame number. So for the first one, we're one frame. Second one, we're taking the second frame of that source comp. And that's it for that portion. So then we have a linear wipe and on transition completion, I have an expression. So let's bring that in. All right, so here we're setting S equal to this comp dot layer controller dot effect number of slices. Basically I pick whipped this guy right here, number of slices. And then our next line, we're doing that same index minus this parent index thing. And we're taking that number away from the total number of slices. So say you have it, it's set to 200 like we do right now. So the first layer would be 199, the next one would be 198. So basically as our index increases, we're going back from 200 to zero. We're gonna take that number and we're gonna multiply it by 100 divided by the number of slices. So that gives us the size of our transition completion. So what that gives us is this one piece on the first one. And then the second one isn't just that next piece, it's the two pieces that make that. And the third one is all of those plus another piece and so on, because the completion gets bigger as we go down the stack of layers. So that's how we have all these little pieces across the whole way. Thanks to layer stacking. All right, then on an opacity, we have another expression. We're basically using that same S equals the number of slices from the controller null. Then we have that same index minus this parent index thing. And we're checking to see if that is less than the number of slices plus one. And that plus one is there so that if we have say 200, we're making sure it's less than 201. If I just had 200 here, it would only work up to 199 and we have a gap. So if this layer is between zero and the number of slices, basically, we're gonna set opacity to 100, otherwise it'll be zero. So this just says whatever number of layers we have here basically are turned on in opacity and otherwise they're off. That's so you can just duplicate a bunch of these things and change them without having to add more or subtract them and it keeps up our speed. So that's how this is built. I built another one that moves, but this is one that you'd have to render out on your own if you wanna use it. It takes a very long time to actually calculate all of these. And I have half the number of slices on this one. The expressions on this one are mostly the same. The only one that's different is time remap. Let's bring up expressionist again, and we'll load that in there. So you can see I'm setting count equal to the controller nulls number of slices, or number of slice, apparently I did that on this one too, because hey, English. All right, then we're setting seed random equal to index. It doesn't really matter what this is, as long as it's constant. And that actually should be kind of true after that, because it's supposed to be timeless. That might make this go a little faster than I thought it was. And then we just have an offset that equals random from zero to count. This doesn't really need to be from zero to count. It can be anything as long as you're adding a random value to it, but that's just what I chose to do. And then we're multiplying that 
times this comp dot frame duration. Because again, as I said, we need this in fractions of a second, not just you know integers. So then we're just taking time and we're adding that offset. All right, let's click on here and apply that, which I forgot to do a minute ago when I was recording this. Click on time remap, hit edit, copy expression only. Select all of these guys down here, paste, command up to go to the top, hit EE, again to open the expressions, and that's been changed. All right, let's see if this goes any faster. Mm, does not appear to be going much faster. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty slow, but you can get some kind of interesting things with it, so I recommend you at least mess with it. I'll show you an example in a little bit. One thing about this is that's really neat is that if you render about 10 frames or so, you get kind of like this anime looking moving background thing. I'll skip ahead and show you guys. So here you can see kind of what that anime looking background thing is kind of like. If you added some colors in here, it could be pretty interesting. I just haven't had a chance to experiment with that. You can also mess around with these techniques on actual footage layers, but I haven't really had much time to experiment with that yet. So I don't really have an example for you guys. All right. I have one last mat. It's just a static mat again. It's basically the same thing as the first one with a matted shape over the top that has a feather on the mask. So these are always a little bit darker than the bottom ones for the most part. So that kind of gives you a little bit more gradient to your displacement or image wipe or whatever. You could probably also mess around with um, revealing these using some sort of mats that go across it. That could be pretty neat, but I haven't had time to mess with that either. All right, so let's see some of these a little bit in action. So this is kind of what the static mat looks like applied to just an, uh, our logo. Just put a little bit of texture on there just so you can see it a little bit better. It's kind of neat. Then we have the animated matte version, and this one will take a bit to calculate, so I will be back. All right, here we go. It's kind of hard to explain this. It's kind of like it just jumps through like digital blockiness until it gets resolved. I don't, I don't know. It's interesting, but it takes forever. So what I'd recommend is if you like this kind of look, just render out that matte O2, like overnight or whatever, and then use it on this. Then it should be a lot faster. All right, so that's that. Let's check out the final uh, example animation over here. This one renders way quicker. As you can see, this is real time. So static is the way to go if you only want that breakup thing. So there we go. We have this thing coming in and bouncing and we have the displacement actually kind of bounce with it. So it gives kind of an interesting look. You can use this for text animation that's coming in. You can go left to right with it if you want. You would basically just change the transition angle. I'll make one of those and throw it in here for the download. And there's just one last example. This is what it looks like if you do it to an image. So we have a time lapse that I shot last year. It's okay. But what it really could be used for is if you just kind of kept it in this state and use it like as a background element or something, that's kind of neat. And there's one more quick thing I want to show you guys, which is kind of strange. When I copied all of this stuff in here, if you copy these like things that have to have a reference layer into a comp where that layer doesn't exist or even into a comp where that layer does exist, it'll automatically link these to whatever you put it on first. And when I did that to this video, it's kind of interesting because the sky is kind of one tone and the water is kind of another tone. So they kind of move off opposite each other. So it kind of looks like a weird, like liquidy bounce thing with a previous animation. Check it out. It's interesting. Like how this kind of like how this part like goes below and then comes back up. It's really weird. Might be an interesting transition to experiment with in your films, but let's go back to that. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you follow our blog at workbench.tv. I have a new After Effects icon set for After Effects 18 so that you can differentiate. I had to use the 17 version for this tutorial because expression doesn't work in 18 for some reason. Anyway, as always, I am Joe and I will see you guys next week. Bye.